Welcome to a Legendarium special about the five strangest weapons of the Middle Ages. Long before modern warfare, knights in shining armor atop armored horses fought for the hands of a maiden and honor in pitched battle with sword and shield. At least, so the romantic fiction goes. As we cover these five strange weapons from the Middle Ages, I'd like you to please write in the comment section which of these weapons you would have liked to have used if you found yourself on a medieval battlefield. The gun shield is exactly what its name would suggest, a shield with a breech-loading matchlock pistol at its center. It also had a small square window over the barrel as an observation port. The shield is believed to have been used by the personal bodyguard of King Henry VIII during the final years of his reign. Many examples of gun shields have been found in England, but they are likely of Italian origin. In fact, the Italian painter Giovan Battista offered them to King Henry VIII in a letter where he described them as several round shields and arm pieces with the guns inside them that fire upon the enemy and pierce any armor. The Italian version of the gun shield proved more delicate and lighter to be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat, compared to the English version typically used on a ship. However, as gunnery advanced, this particular technology soon died out. The spring-loaded triple dagger appeared to be a normal dagger at first glance, but when the user pressed a release, two spring-loaded side daggers popped out. This contrivance made the single dagger into a trident. At the time, fighting men used daggers as a side weapon in case they lost their sword. As such, daggers had extremely sharp points rather than sharpened sides, making it more effective as a stabbing weapon that could pierce armor. The usefulness of the triple dagger came in its versatility. One could use it as a simple dagger to stab or use the triple pronged version to inflict even more damage. It also proved effective at capturing the weapons of other opponents and parrying when used in exhibition combat. European fencers used this weapon during the Middle Ages, but its expense made use in real wars impossible. Most of us know that ancient warriors used javelins, but fewer know that medieval soldiers continued to use them. In fact, medieval craftsmen made them better. These special medieval weapons, called fletched javelins, had feather fletching at the bottom of their shafts, which steadied the javelin while in flight. They resembled giant arrows and appeared regularly in medieval artwork. Craftsmen built them differently from regular javelins, using lighter wood but larger and heavier heads to cause more damage. They found more use in the early medieval period than declined as the popularity of of the longbow and the crossbow grew. Fletched javelins saw use in other parts of the world as well. In the Americas, indigenous nations used a special kind of sling called the otl otl. This wooden tool could launch a fletched javelin with twice the strength of an arm throw just by flicking the wrist. Ancient Greeks used a similar leather sling to launch javelins, but this practice died out well before the Middle Ages. The man-catcher was a long-shafted pole-arm with a two-headed prong on the end that looked like a collar. Fighting men typically used this to pull a rider from his horse. They especially used it to capture wealthy knights for ransom since it did not wound the captive, and since sh such captives could be returned for thousands of gold pieces, you aren't going to want to injure a golden goose like that. Soldiers expected the armor of the Capti to protect them against injury by the metal prongs of the man-catcher. However, if the rider did not wear any armor, they could suffer wounds from the spikes on the inner ring of the prongs. These man-catchers also included sharpened spikes and spring-loaded doors to trap the victim's limbs. Cruder versions helped watchmen to patrol city streets since they could literally put the collar on thieves. A similar weapon, the Sasumata, saw use in Japan. It resembled a speared fork but could have padding on it, and soldiers used it during riots as a form of crowd control. 
Finally, the Lantern Shield has been called the Swiss Army Knife of Weapons, as it housed many items on one shield. At the time, a strong dueling culture pervaded among Italian youth, at least those who could afford fencing lessons. Many young men went out after dark to cause trouble on the streets or take part in duels over matters of honor. Most brought this small, buckler-shaped shield, which included a hook upon which one could hang a lantern. This feature blinded the opponent during battles fought in the dark. More elaborate lantern shields included gauntlets, spikes, sword blades, or a dimmer for the lantern. Fencing manuals often included a lantern into the lessons of a swordsman, for they could use it to parry and even blind. By the height of the Renaissance, the most advanced lantern shields had all kinds of features. They included serrated gauntlets designed to catch and break an opponent's sword, spikes that jutted out of the shield's front, and sword blades forged into the shield, making it into an offensive weapon. Their strangest feature, however, must be a small flap covered by a piece of leather. The user mounted a lantern behind this flap and then suddenly lifted it to blind the opponent with the light and thus deliver a decisive blow. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.